Can you tell us a little bit about the emotional siphon recordings, what, what that's all about? Yeah, I mean, I started the label a couple years ago and I had a band on, two bands on it. And, you know, I just want to give back to what was given to me was the opportunity to make music and an avenue for up and coming bands. And the record business is just really hard. I kind of got into it at a wrong time, but, you know, I think my heart was in the right place. And now my pockets aren't, <laughs> my pockets aren't as deep as, you know, say uh, uh, Warner Brothers, right. you know what I mean? So, and, and you know, even for you know, everybody, it's been tough across the board, you know, for dropping money and, you know, fund, yeah, funding everything from recording to touring to promotion uh, becomes really expensive really very fast. So uh, it's just kind of like on the back burner. I have it and I'll hopefully use that label to release my own record fear in the nervous system a little bit later so release like we were just talking about uh, you know doing these recordings and everything like that and funding your own stuff um, you know obviously it's uh, there's a lot of strain in doing that stuff I mean does that actually come in you think does knowing all doing all that stuff and after night after night making sure you know the books are being balanced so to speak we know you have tour manager and everything does that put a lot of extra strain on you and maybe affect your performance or is that you kind of like set that aside when you guys hit the stage it's like worry about that later absolutely we, the the two are completely separate so and that's the way it should be um the business end of it always remains solely by itself the artist side we get to do what we want that that just shuts off when we go on stage and or when we're in the studio one of the th questions i'm sure a lot of corn fans always ask and are always wondering is um you pretty much started this brand with uh brian head welch a long time ago and now he's out doing his own solo stuff and you know um do you still have any communication with him is there like you know what's going on between you and him nothing um, Fieldy told me he spoke to him for the first time in a few years, a couple of weeks ago. Um, as far as him and I, we have never, unfortunately, I never got a goodbye, and I'm just kind of bitter about that still. He knows, he knows, but I miss him, and, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I think he'll come back around, but I don't know. Maybe not. And um, once you know, we do we do want to find a, a permanent guitar player, and hopefully, by the time he makes up his mind, that door will still be open. Because if we find the right person, uh, it could shut quickly. So. Um, wrapping up. Um we pretty much know what Corn's very busy. Obviously, you got your solo stuff going on, and you know um, your record label. But what can fans expect for Corn the rest of 2009, going into 2010? Pretty much, you know, just just a Corn base. You know, like besides the record and possible tours or anything else, can we expect out of you guys? Um, I think we're we're really focused, and I think we're just concentrated and have our eyes looking forward instead of in the clouds. <laughs> so I think that's mainly what you'll see from us. Fans, you heard it here first. Uh, 2009 Check Corn Out, very exclusive club show and you know tour festival dates also in Europe. Uh, after that, look for a new CD from these guys, late 2009, possibly 2010. We appreciate your time today. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Good, check this out, man. Thank you.